In the previous few tutorials, we have looked at sequence-based protein structure prediction methods for obtaining the structure of a structured protein or globular protein or ordered protein based on different methods such as homology modeling or threading for that matter. But how about if we anticipate that a particular sequence of a protein, that is the amino acid sequence, also has regions of long disorder or at least short disorder regions between two order regions. In that case, it becomes increasingly difficult to predict or pinpoint or annotate the particular regions which has the propensity of being disordered. So in the first place, these protein sequences do not have a structure against it for the obvious reason that X-ray crystallography methods are not uh, good enough in order to characterize these fluctuating regions or the fluctuating domains which are basically in the random coil or loop formation. So in that case the first thing that we can do is predict the definitive regions that might have the propensity to become unstructured. So a particular facet for these proteins is basically having the propensity to uh, go from a disorder to an order state that is be in a constant dynamic equilibrium between the disorder and the order state. So it's important to identify what is the degree of disorder in specific regions in the proteins. So thankfully for us there are a number of web servers available which does the sequence based prediction of disorder. And today in this tutorial we'll look at two different methods. The first one being the eSpritz Disprot method. So it's an artificial neural network or machine learning based algorithm which uh, has a specific name to it. It's called bidirectional recursive uh, neural network. So it's basically a deep learning algorithm that has a training set and testing set for supervised learning and they contain two hidden layers of opposite direction uh, to the same output. So it's a very very efficient method. So it obtains information from other databases that already has the annotations for the disordered proteins. And another web server is IUPRED long, which is basically a context dependent disorder prediction method for long disordered regions as the name says, such that transitions between disorder to order states is initiated by the presence of binding partners and thus are recognized as disordered regions. So disordered binding regions identified using a different kind of predicting algorithm called anchor2. So it has interface with that anchor2. So we'll look at these two different methods or web servers for predicting the disordered regions from the protein sequence information of amyloid beta 42 and alpha synuclein. So the proteins or the intrinsically disordered proteins which are responsible for uh, the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease respectively and then compare our results in terms of the quality of the prediction by both these servers. So the first thing that we need as an input for both the servers is basically the sequence information in the FASTA format. And for that, we need to have the primary sequence or the primary amino acid sequence of the proteins amyloid beta 42 and alpha synuclein. So we'll basically obtain these disordered sequences from another database, which is called the DISPROT database or the database for disordered proteins as the name suggests. So DISPROT is a database for intrinsically disordered proteins and disordered regions manually curated from literature. So DISPROT annotations cover both structural and functional aspects of disorder detected by specific experimental methods. So DISPROT could be regarded as a sister database of UNIPROT that contains the protein sequence information for all the proteins including the ones that are available and experimentally solved in the protein data bank but with the only difference that it's specifically for the intrinsically disordered proteins which means it has the manual deposition of disordered regions that are determined experimentally. So now one thing you have to be careful about and you have to keep in mind is that although we are looking at this particular database for extracting the intrinsically disordered protein sequences but ideally when you find the sequence you wouldn't know whether certain regions are ordered or disordered or not. So you'll basically feed that information into these two different uh, web servers in order to obtain the specific annotations for the ordered or the disordered regions. This is just uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm showing how to obtain the disordered sequences from this particular database. So as you can see, they have these annotations for proteins per organism. So for homo sapiens, as humans, they have about 591 proteins sequences submitted for which certain regions or whole of the proteins are disordered and then for rats and mice and then yeast 
an E. coli organism from which they obtained the sequence and they annotated them separately via experiments. And then the newest feature is the viruses as you can see from the latest post here which says this brought 2020-06 has new viral proteins especially due to the outbreak of COVID-19 virus. And they also have a social media where you can get all the latest information about the latest depositions and the updates that are done on this database. So this has constantly been updated uh, with new information on source organisms and the sequences. So the first sequence that we are going to look for out here is the amyloid beta 42. So amyloid beta 42 is a 42 residue isoform of the amyloid beta protein. And as you already know from the slides that amyloid beta uh, is roughly 37 to 42 residue protein. And depending on the region of splicing from the amyloid precursor protein, the length of the uh, amyloid beta protein differs. So we could go to the source organism Homo sapiens and search for this protein amyloid beta 42 or we could search for the protein here directly so which is an easier way to go about it. So I'm just going to start by typing amyloid here and then pressing on search. So it will bring you to the next page where you have a list of the protein that it found hits for and probably uh, have the disordered regions annotated for them in whole or in parts. As you can see, the first hit that you get is actually alpha-synuclein because it belongs to the class of amyloid proteins. So we'll obtain that sequence later on, but first amyloid beta 42. And they show the source organism uh, as homo sapiens and the disordered content as 100% here. So we'll check that with the predicting web server for the disordered regions, whether they match up to what the annotations are via the experiments. So that'll give us an idea about the quality of the prediction that these methods do. So, and the next we find transcriptor factor GAGA, -GA, which is also probably part of amyloid. And what we are looking for is amyloid beta, which are these two hits that we get out here. So the first you have the disprot ID, which is specific for this database out here. And then you have the uniprot accessory code. So as I said, that it's a sister database for, of uniprot. So you all also have the uniprot accession code alongside. And the source organism is homo sapiens. So this is what we are concerned about. And the state here that the disordered content is actually 5.19%, which is very, very less compared to that of alpha synuclein. So one possible reason could be that amyloid beta 42, although uh, predominantly disordered in nature, but it, it has the propensity of sampling ordered regions, let's say the secondary structures like alpha helix or beta strands uh, during the course of their evolution in the structural dynamics feature. So we'll check that with the predicting methods. So let's go ahead and click on this protein name because this is what we are looking for obtained from Homo sapiens. So once we click on it, it will bring you to a page with the uh, information about the specific protein, which in our case is the amyloid beta precursor protein. And as you can see, the sequence length for this is 770 residues, which means that by catalytic cleavage, of certain regions, especially in the C-terminal of this protein, we will we can obtain the amyloid beta 42 isoform of this protein or the peptide which we are interested in specifically. And you can see the disordered content as well as we have seen previously to be 5.2% annotated. So if you move down further, we find the PFAM and gene 3D domains annotation. So that's a different annotation for the uh, binding regions that are there and also the nature of the protein that is it shows that this portion is basically amyloidogenic uh, glycoprotein and it's responsible for heparin binding whereas you have another copper binding domain which is basically in the amyloid beta 42 it's uh, 1 to 16 residues whereas in this fragment it's especially 131 to 188 so these are useful information to have with regards to the annotations of the disorders, disordered regions. Okay, so if you scroll down further, we'll find all these structural features. So the first being the structural state and the corresponding experiment that was used to solve the structural state. So by structural state, we mean the predominant state in which the protein or the peptide is found. So here you have the term disorder, which means it's predominantly disordered. But the state here, highlight here specifically the finding from the experiment, which suggests that although it's dynamically disordered structure, but it has high degree of turns and twists, and but it's also without a well-defined secondary structure.
So there is propensity for secondary structures, but it's not that well defined. So moving on, we find the second structural state. Well, it's also predominantly disordered, whereas it's a different kind of experiments where they oxidized methionine 35 residue and they saw some disruption of the helix 2 region. So one additional thing that you have to bear in mind is basically the fact that these proteins uh, might not be solved in water because it's, as I've said already, it's extremely difficult to solve the structures of these proteins in water. Forget about X-ray crystallography, even by NMR spectroscopy, it's difficult to obtain a structure because they would be in a constant fluctuating medium and that would create basically an ensemble of structure as opposed to a single structure. But then again, the NMR methods also have specific restraints by which they can obtain certain information, although not the structural coordinates, but information regarding uh, certain structural features based on the chemical shift data or the J coupling constant or paramagnetic resonance enhancement or those kind of NMR specific data. So the first two structures here are solved by NMR. And the third one is solved by circular dichroism or CD, which is very efficient for determining the secondary structures as well. So in the CD spectrum, they found that it's predominantly disordered again. So it's all about disordered protein, predominantly disordered protein or a peptide with the propensity to sample secondary structures from time to time very transiently. The fourth structure is also NMR and it's predominantly disordered and the fifth one is also disordered and next we, as we move on, we'll find that there's information on structural transition as well, which is the order to disorder or the disorder to order transition. So the first one is basically order to disorder transition, which states that the oxidation of the methionine 35 residue, which is in the C-terminal of the amyloid beta 42, leads to a structural disruption in the helical 2 region. So they started off with a helical structure and then they found some disruption in the ordered helix, which led to a disordered region. So the helical structure in the first place might have been solved in an organic solvent as opposed to water, or let's say in a lipid medium, lipid bound state. And the second structural transition information is the disorder to order. So from a predominantly disordered structure, which is potentially solved in water, and this is for amyloid beta 1 to 40 residues, as this is a different isoform, and it's less toxic and pathogenic or less aggregating than that of amyloid beta 1 to 42. And this is solved by circular dichroism or CD. And they see in the CD spectrum that it has the characteristics of random coil, but over the days, it has the propensity to sample beta sheet structure, which is enable to formation of fibrils. Okay, so the next information that we have in this repository is the disorder function. So sometimes the disorder state might also guide certain functions like binding to certain binding partners like protein partners or small molecule ligands or in that matter uh, the antibodies as well so this is another molecular recognition display site so this basically gives an idea about the molecular recognition that is initially it needs to get recognized the disordered regions by their binding partners certain regions of the binding partners and this is solved by nuclear magnetic resonance and it states that the methionine 35 causes local and selective disruption again of the helix 2. And the helix to coil rearrangement is in aqueous mycelis. Are the, it inhibits the coil to sheet transition in water. So the oxidation basically inhibits the transition from a disordered state to an ordered state in nature. So there's a treasure trove of information out here in the disparate database about the specific protein that you're looking for. And lastly, the information is about A beta 1 to 40. So initially produces a CD spectrum characteristic of random coil, but this changes over days again to form a beta sheet structure, which is the same information that we have, saw, uh, that we have seen before. But uh, this is more related to the formation of the amyloid by you know, molecular recognition and binding site information. Now, another information that you got to look at out here is the fragment. So since this is a precursor protein, it's amyloid beta precursor protein, and so there are definite fragment annotations, which might mean specific regions that might be an isoform, a specific isoform of the amyloid beta protein. The most prominent one is the amyloid beta 1 to 42, but we are not sure that this is the exact region which forms 1 to 42. At least we have to count within these residue regions to find if there are 42 residues or 40 residues, or let's say we can go down up to 37 
according to the number of isoforms that we have got for amyloid beta peptide. But in order to in obtain the specific information about which regions in the amyloid beta precursor protein or let's say the APP corresponds to amyloid beta 42, we'll have to go back to the UniProt database where the specific annotations for the APP is available. So once we go to this UniProt database and type in here amyloid beta again, So it lead us to a results page where you'll have the first one as A4 human, which is the one which we are looking for. It's Homo sapiens, the organism of origin, and the protein name is amyloid beta precursor protein again. But once we go into this entry, we'll find the specific regions that are annotated, that is, that must be cleaved in order to form that particular amyloid beta isoform. In our case, the one which we are interested in is the amyloid beta 42 peptide. And you can confirm again from the length of this protein as 770 residues for the APP. So we click on this entry, the first entry, and as we scroll down, as you've seen before with the other proteins as well, it contains a lot of information. And the specific information that we are looking for is the annotations of the regions that might correspond to amyloid beta 1 to 42. Okay, so as we are scrolling down, yes. So this is the post-translational modification information that we are uh, interested in. So in the molecular processing, we find that specific chains are the regions within the change. So the signal peptide is the N-terminal region 1 to 17 of the APP, the amyloid beta precursor protein, and followed by other regions that are involved in specific functions or they have specific characteristics. The one which we are interested in is the amyloid beta protein 42, which is the 42 residue isoform of the amyloid beta peptide. So this caters to regions 672 to 713. So we'll specifically have to look for this particular region in order to obtain the sequence specific to amyloid beta 42. So if you go back to the disprot database, and you must remember this region that 672 to 713 and if you go here and look for those fragmental regions, so the first one is 672 to 711, which means it's basically A beta 1 to 40 and not A beta 1 to 42. If you go down further, we'll find it. Uh, the second one is 697 to 711. The one which we are looking for is 672 to 713. So we go down and we look for that region. We cannot find it. We have the information about A beta 1 to 40, which, is, which ends in 711 residue position, but none of the fragments here end in 713 residue position. So for this particular protein, amyloid beta 42, we'll have to re uh, refer to the and rely on the UniProt database. So you can directly click here and it will lead you to a page where it will show the sequence and it will ask you to run a blast search on it, but we don't want that. So we'll basically go ahead and copy this sequence as whole, which is already in the past FASTA format. And this is specifically for the 42 residue amyloid beta 42. We'll copy this and then paste it in the web server where we are interested in finding the regions that cater to the disorderliness. So we paste the sequence here. So the first web server that we are interested in is the eSpritz Disprot. And the second one that we are interested in is iUPRED 2A. That's a long format here. So paste the amino acid sequence in the faster format here as well. So in case of disprot eSpreads, you can paste two sequences one after the other in a separate line. But in case of IUPRED 2A, you have to do it separately for each of the peptides. So first we'll do for amyloid beta 42, and then we'll go ahead and do it for the alpha synuclein protein. That's 140 residues long, okay? So before doing that, let's search for the alpha synuclein protein in the disprot database. So again, we go back to the home page and make a search for alpha synuclein. So we just type in synuclein and press search. It'll lead us to a page where the first hit itself is alpha synuclein here. Now we won't really have any problem obtaining the full structure for the alpha synuclein because it's not a cleavage product unlike amyloid beta 42. So it's not generated after the cleavage of a protein precursor. It is generated as a whole. So it is synthesized as a whole protein. 
containing 1 to 140 residues. And as we have seen earlier, the disorder content is 100%, which means it's disordered with very little propensity to sample secondary structural regions. So we go ahead and click on this protein name. It will lead us to a next page where they will show the sequence directly out here, as you can see. And so if you scroll down further, it will again give you the information about the structural state, which is more predominance of disorder than the amyloid beta 42. And the fragment is 1 to 103 out of the 140 residues that it has solved by NMR. The next is solved by FTIR or Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. And this is the full fragment of the protein that's 1 to 140, also predominantly disordered. Further down the line, if we go over to... So there's a lot of structural states for this protein solved by different experimental methods, and they have different findings as regard to the regions which might have the propensity to sample certain secondary structure, be it alpha helices or beta sheets. So the structural transition information has the disorder to order transition predominantly, and all of them are disordered to order transition as opposed to amyloid beta, which also had the information for order to disorder transition, possibly because of the initial structure was solved in an organic solvent or a lipid medium. And the interaction partner information has here that it's a lipid binding protein, basically. So it's very amenable to bind the membrane lipids or the surface of the cell membrane in order to show its action. And it's also highly toxic when binding to the membrane lipids. The second information that you have here is also for the lipid binding interaction partner, while the third information is a protein binding. So specifically, it binds to microtubules or MTs, which are responsible for the interaction with the tubule engine. So this protein, just like the amyloid beta 42, it's not possible to get a complete disordered ensemble of structure uh, when you solve it in water medium, or let's say when you solve it in aqueous medium. So you have also information about the disorder function. So regarding the molecular recognition, if you go down further, so it acts as an effective protein as well. So there's a lot of information since this protein is more than three times than that of amyloid beta 42 in terms of the number of residue size. Therefore, different regions, it has more regions which are facilitating different functions and binding to different kinds of proteins and also undergoing a number of disorder to order transitions for that matter. So next thing, we'll obtain the sequence of this protein in FASTA format. So we scroll to the top again, and we find the sequence here, the sequence information given here, but it's not in FASTA format. So we go to download, and then we select the format as FASTA, and then it will ask you what you want the namespace to be. So there are information based on the uh, structural state, disorder function, structural transition interaction partner. But these are basically, you know, sequence information. So the fragment of the sequence that that is considered in order to annotate the specific structural state, disorder function, structural transition or interaction partner. So we'll go for the structural state. And we want all the regions in here. So even regions of ambiguous evidence. And we don't want to include obsolete regions. Or uh, let's say we don't want a consensus sequence. So we'll go ahead and download this. I'll ask you where to save the sequence. So we basically go to the workspace directory where you will save the sequence. So let's give it a name saying asyn.fasta. So asyn is a short form for alpha synuclein. And we save it here. And then we click on the sequence and it leads us to the text file where you have all the sequences in FASTA format for which the structural feature or the structural state information was available. And you see the, the residue range or the residue positions that the sequences cover. So we are interested in the full sequence that is 1 to 140. So we can go ahead and select the first sequence and then copy it. Close this file and then go to the predictor eSpirits. And next to this amyloid beta sequence that we have already pasted, we paste in the sequence for the alpha synuclein as well. Okay, 
So we can give a name to the sequence like let's say amyloids if you want and you can let them email you the results as soon as they are available but you don't really require this option because this process is very fast. It's basically deriving uh, information of the structural features from the sequence itself so it shouldn't take long. So we can skip that option. You also have an option to upload the sequence in the faster format. That is the dot faster format. And now for the prediction type. So the prediction type, you have three options. One is X-ray, the other one is Disprot, and the third one is NMR. So we are interested in predicting the disordered regions from scratch as opposed to an NMR-guided or X-ray-guided experimental feature. So we'll go for Disprot, which is basically this database. So it collects all the target sequences from this database and based on the annotated regions that are already there for this uh, deposited in this database it makes a prediction according to the artificial neural network machine learning algorithm then we hit on submit so once we do that so it shows the status as running here the title is amyloids and you have a PID for your job as well you haven't given any email address so we'll wait for a job to finish. So while we are waiting for this job to finish, we'll go to the second predictor, the disorder predictor, that's IU pred long. And as I've said before, that this particular predictor considers all the sequences one by one. That is, you can't paste the alpha synuclein sequence on top of the amyloid beta sequence that you have already. So we'll let this run first on amyloid beta, and then we'll come back and paste the alpha synuclein sequence for it to make, make the prediction. And as you can see, there are three options out here. The first one is IUPRED2 long disorder. That's the default one. That's the one which we want since we anticipate that there will be long regions of uh, unstructured uh, regions or disordered regions in the protein or the peptide. And there's another option for IUPRED2 short disorder, which is for the short disordered regions. And you have also the predictions for the structured domains in the predominantly disordered regions. So we'll go ahead with the first option here and you have options for the algorithm that it might used for predicting the disordered regions. So the first one is context dependent prediction, that's the default, and it uses Anchor2 based on an improved architecture. So you also have an option for the redox state determined from the experiments based on the structural architecture or the sequence architecture, the arrangement of the sequences that you might have. So redox state is basically the oxidation or the reduction states of the specific residues and it makes a uh, prediction based on the redox state, which is very, very efficient. For simplicity purposes, we will go ahead with the default option, which is the default for Anchor2, and we hit Submit. So in the next results page of IUPRED long, you'll find a graphical representation of the disorder propensity with the y-axis having a scale from 0 to 1 the residue-wise propensity of 0.5 would mean that they are basically disordered in nature, whereas a score below 0.5 would mean they have some propensity to be ordered. So in this case, as you can see from both the Anchor 2 scores, which is in blue, and the IUPRED 2 long score, which is in red, the protein, the peptide amyloid beta 42, has the propensity of being slightly ordered as opposed to being completely disordered. So you can see towards the end, that is towards the C-terminal, especially they have got this propensity to be ordered which makes uh, sense in that regard because the C-terminal as well as the central hydrophobic domain have got the propensity to, you know, uh, come together, stick to one another and give rise to this oligomers and formation of fibrils which finally forms the plaques in the brains. So they have additional scores based on the PFAM classification. So it's a different annotation based on the families of the proteins. And you can see that it regards it as predominantly disordered protein. So the name is given here as beta APP, which is basically the precursor protein that we considered in this regard. Then you have an additional option to download the results in the text format. So if you click on download results and go to text, you will find that it opens up in a new uh, tab on the browser itself and you will find the residue wise scores given alongside both for IUPRED and Anchor. And you find that these scores are below 0.5, which means they are predominantly ordered in nature. Uh, or let's say they have this uh, propensity of uh, converting uh, structure conversion from a disordered state to an ordered state for all of them from 1 to 42. 
So there's uh, another option where you can download this plot as well. So if you go to this kind of icon, the floppy disk kind of icon where you have the save option, and if you click on it, it will ask you to save the plot in your local machine. So I'm inside the work directory here, so workspace 2. Just go ahead and save it. And if you open it up, you'll find the same plot being displayed on the screen. Okay, so just before comparing our results to eSprit this plot, uh, the IUPRED results. So we'll just plot the disorder propensity for the alpha synuclein protein as well and keep it alongside because you know IUPRED2 doesn't allow uh, assessment of uh, two different proteins in the same input space. So we'll have to do it separately for alpha synuclein. So we'll open again the sequence input page for IUPRED here. So let me just close this, open a new tab and just type in IUPRED. So this will bring you to the home page again and you have to paste a amino acid sequence for alpha synuclein now here. So I have already copied it. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste it so you can see 1 to 140 the residue IDs, all of the residue in one letter code for alpha synuclein are pasted here. It will keep the default settings here uh, for the long disordered regions and for the context dependent prediction method with anchor 2 and we hit on submit. Okay, so immediately it gives you the results and as you can, as you can see, uh, quite contrast to that of amyloid beta 42, alpha synuclein has a much higher propensity for the disorder for the residue wise cosa, almost closer to that of uh, 0.5 for the first uh, few residues until uh, the central hydrophobic domain region. And then finally for the C-terminal region, which is a random coil, uh, it completely shoots up and goes all the way up to one there because the C-terminal is very floppy and it doesn't form a structure at all. So that's that's quite encouraging that it's matching up well with that of what we have anticipated uh, from the disk prod as well and what we know from previous literature and the experimental um, results, let's say. So we'll go ahead and compare this with the eSpreads uh, disk prod results, which by now should be ready. And as you can see, yes, the results are ready out here. So let's have a look into the details of the analysis or the evaluation. So as you can see, the total amino acid content is given as 182. That's the amyloid beta 42 and the alpha synuclein taken together. So amyloid beta 42 is 42 residues and alpha synuclein is 140. So the total is 182. And they categorize the proteins as being separate. That is total number of proteins as two. And the total percentage disorder, overall disorder for both the proteins is 100%. So that's a bit contrary to what we have predicted for IUPRED2 for especially amyloid beta 42, which had the propensity for certain regions to be ordered as well. Like most of the regions were ordered except for the N-terminal had a little bit of propensity towards the disorder. So if you move on further, we find that percentage of proteins with at least one disordered region greater than 50 amino acid is 50% there. And total number of disordered regions greater than 30 amino acids are 2. And total number of disordered regions greater than 50 amino acid that caters to alpha synuclein is 1. So move down further and we find the categorization according to the charged, the uncharged and the hydrophobic amino acid. So the percentage of all amino acid that are charged or uncharged and hydrophobic are given here. And all of them, for all of them, the percentage of disorder is 100% again. Whereas the residue wise propensity for disorder based on the percentage of all amino acid as well as the total percentage of disorder are given as well, except for cysteine and tryptophan, which has got this cyclic rings. It's difficult to predict the disorder range for these amino acids. That's why they're given as 0% out here. And if you move down further, you have further analysis in terms of the histogram of disorder segments. So if we click on this PDF file, you'll find the rank ordering or the rank distribution of the disordered segments. So the first one, amyloid beta 42 is ranked zero, whereas the second one, alpha synuclein is ranked one, which means that alpha synuclein has a greater propensity to be disordered than that of amyloid beta 42. So then again, you have the distribution as well for all the amino acids. So here you'll find the percentage of residues in all proteins that have the propensity of being disordered, which you found the information for here already in the tabular form. It's shown in the graphical form out here again. So, uh, but the total propensity, you know, the residue percentage in disorder is 100% here for all of the 
amino acid residues. So uh, that's uh, the difference between the two methods actually with regards to amyloid beta 42. It's very very difficult to predict the exact disorder content for amyloid beta 42 especially given the uh, short segment that it has and also the uh, propensity for it being uh, more ordered over the course of uh, its trajectory or over the course of its dynamics where it's, uh, the floppy loop regions might uh, sample ordered regions like the secondary structures and which promotes it to bind to another amyloid beta 42 and give rise to aggregation or to other binding partners and small molecules. Okay. So finally, we have this links to individual protein pages, which is the disprot ID that we had for alpha synuclein and the uniprot link that we had for amyloid beta 42. And for both of them, again, the disorder prediction is 100%. All right, so we have done the prediction based on the sequence information only for the two disordered proteins or intrinsically disordered proteins, amyloid beta 42 and alpha synuclein. And based on our analysis, we find that with E spreads, Disprot method, the both the IDPs are chosen to be disordered. Like both the IDPs are predicted to be completely disordered mostly, whereas with IPRID method, which is based on the context-dependent anchor two uh, algorithm, it shows that amyloid beta 42 might have some propensity to be ordered in the regions of the C-terminal and the central hydrophobic domain, whereas alpha synuclein, just like E-spritz Disprot method has the propensity to be completely disordered.